This volcano could erupt at any moment, and for the next 100 days, I will be surviving on this dangerous island. Will I be able to create a base to stay protected from the eruption? What abilities will the volcanic items grant me? And can I become strong enough to defeat the evil fire dragon? Speaking of fire dragons, on my first day here, I found a dragon egg, but if I was to get close, I would have to get past these magma beasts. They were extremely intimidating, so I snuck around and started grabbing some sand so I could build up. But then they found me. These things do extreme amounts of damage, and with just one and a half hearts left, I would have no choice but to sprint away as fast as possible and start scaling the tree. I grabbed some wood, made a crafting table, placed it down, and made a full set of basic wooden tools. I continued scaling this tree. There it was, the fire dragon egg. I broke the wood beneath it and picked it up. Wow, I wonder what this thing looks like when it's fully grown up. But it was way too dangerous to hatch it here. I was surrounded by these creatures that were mutated by the volcano itself. I took the dragon egg and started my descent, and with just two and a half hearts left, I made a run for it. But this volcanic creeper was extremely fast, so I had no choice but to build up and create space between us. I was safe for now, but then I heard a strange noise coming from the distance. It was the volcano! The whole island was shaking! But then after a while, it simmered down. I now knew what I had to do. I'm located south of the island, but I want to build my base on the side of the volcano to monitor whether it will erupt. Day one was coming to a close, and whilst the sun was setting, I decided to move. But then I made a grave mistake. I almost lost my life, and with just half a heart, I was surrounded by enemies. I had to find somewhere safe. I stumbled across this cave, grabbed some coal, made some torches, and headed in hesitantly. But then I realized I couldn't make any tools, because I didn't have wood or a crafting table. Because I left it earlier, okay? What are you, the crafting table police? I decided with just half a heart to go out and risk it. I didn't get much wood, but it was enough to get back into the cave, make a crafting table, and upgrade my wooden tools to stone ones so I could get to work mining that iron. I was constantly on edge with such little health, so I decided to block myself in just in case I get creeped on by a creeper. I then made a furnace, placed it down, and started smelting up all of the iron I had collected, which was quite a considerable amount. I then whipped out my pickaxe and continued mining until I came across sunlight. Day two. I thought it might be a good idea to grab some food, but then I spotted this dude and there was no way I was risking it with just half a heart, so I headed back into the cave and blocked myself in. Once I made it back, I wanted to make a shield, but realized I don't have enough wood, so once again I'd have to go out, risk it, and get some wood. Speaking of risking it, look how close I just got to that cactus. Bro, I am living my life on the edge right now. I finally came across some berries though, which was a great food source. Now, I didn't have a lot, but it was enough to keep me alive. I headed back to my little cave, finally made the shield, and upgraded my stone tools to iron ones. And then I took a moment to snack on the berries. I then made a full set of iron armor, which was amazing. Bro, <laughs> how am I still alive? Like, what the hell? I continued to gather resources on day two because I couldn't do much else with just half a heart. But then I decided decided to go and get some food, and I had to make it quick because enemies were watching my every move. I headed straight for the ocean. I thought my best bet would be tropical fish because they can't fight back. I got so excited at the prospect I was finally going to eat that I actually forgot how to breathe and almost lost my life. Seriously, how have I survived this long? Whilst collecting food, the volcano started shaking once again. A quick reminder that I need to stay on track. So I rushed home as quick as possible, picking up resources and also avoiding ambushes like this snapping turtle. I headed back into the cave and ran back home. Finally, I stuck my food in the furnace and waited for it to cook. Whilst it cooks, please hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. It helps me out a bunch. I finally regained health with food and then headed out to go and see that snapping turtle. Yes, I know you're probably wondering wondering why there is a reason number one because he just looks cool oh, look at him put me down please and number two they grow moss on their backs which i'm pretty sure with shears i'll be able to harvest to do something with armor i don't know i just wanted the turtle okay give me a break i crafted a chest placed all of the items i had collected so far made some axes and headed out on day three to start collecting resources i collected as much wood and sand as possible just in case i can't get my hands on any when i get to the volcano day four was here and i spent most of it underwater i I wanted to collect as much food as possible, but I quickly learned that the ocean was no longer safe because I was attacked by hammerhead sharks and even poisonous pufferfish. Day 5 rolled around and I decided it was time to head out and find the volcano. I was sneaking past mobs left, right and centre when suddenly
suddenly I came across this weird lizard looking thing. But it did a ton of damage with its poisonous attacks. Its poisonous bites were ripping through my heart, leaving me no choice but to build up and create some space. But I was still in range. He was still doing damage. I had no choice but to stand and watch my heart deplete. He left me with just half a heart. I ate some food and then escaped by bridging across and jumping over the treetops. It was time to head for the mountains, so I dived off into this water. Well, we can pretend I did. I then continued battling mobs, zombies and creepers until I finally made it to the mountains. I grabbed some ores on the way, but then the island started shaking once again. I had to hurry, so I started scaling the mountain. I finally made it to the top. There it was. There was the volcano. This volcanic monster was huge. If it were to erupt, it would be absolutely devastating. But then I heard a strange noise. It was coming from behind me. I decided to choose some food and head down. It seemed to be some sort of nest. A creature came crawling out towards me. I didn't know whether it was friendly or not, but then it started climbing up and stabbed me with its stinger. I was poisoned. The poison was doing extreme amounts of damage and I was left with just half a heart. The creature chased me, stopped and stared me in the eye. This creature was going to eat me alive, so I dived off and struck him with my sword. But these things don't take fall damage. It just floated down, crawled around, and started circling me. Enough was enough. I bridged across and finished this creature. I realized from its skin I could craft tough armor and weaponry, so I decided I would head into the nest the next day and get my hands on more of that stuff. But this place was treacherous. This sticky maze-like tunnel ran deep. I knew I was close to the queen because I could see an egg. I headed down deeper and deeper, and there she was. She started swinging her poisonous tail at me. It was time to battle this beast. She fired me high into the air, doing extreme amounts of damage, leaving me with just half a heart, and then persistently stabbed me with her tail, breaking down my shield. Her persistent hits wouldn't stop. I had to look for an opening. I started to sprint away as fast as possible and headed into this small enclosed area of the nest. I bugged myself in with wood, regained my strength, placed a crafting table, made a bowl, and scavenged what I could find to make some more food. I then headed back in to fight the queen. She was swinging her pendulum-like stinger at me, but then stopped and started summoning a small army of creatures. They started striking against my shield, but I started swinging back. But then they got the better of me, and they managed to poison me. Oh no, I'm poisoned. I've got to get out of here. I was losing hearts. They were depleting fast. I thought this would be the moment I would lose my life. These creatures had blocked me into the corner. I didn't know what to do. I struck them with my sword and managed to create some space between us. I then finished off the last few. I can't believe I had just half a heart. I regained some strength, headed back out to finish off the last few monsters, and then headed in to finally defeat this queen creature. Her pendulum-like poisonous stinger was swinging at me, but I finally finished her off. She dropped a ton of the material I could use to make the armor. I also found a sticky capsule full of food and also one of the queen's eggs, which, here, you can have that, because I don't want to see any more of these things. Suddenly, the entire hive started shaking. I thought it was going to collapse, so I started sprinting away and made it out. I then used my parkour skills to navigate the mountain and then finally made it to the base of the volcano. Day 7 was here, and whilst I was eating, I decided to make a very small hut because I wanted to build a bigger area so I could hatch the dragon egg, which we will do very soon, I promise. I made a chest and stored all of the things ready for the dragon egg build, but then I saw my entire house caught on fire. I don't know what I expected really. I quickly put out the fire but then I noticed the chest was engulfed in flames. I couldn't believe it. I lost all of my resources. Just before I headed out to grab more resources, I noticed a couple of illagers climbing the volcano. I wonder what they were going there for. Are they keeping something from me? I'll have to go there later. It wasn't all bad news though because I still kept what the creatures dropped earlier so I crafted a full set of this weird armor which looked pretty cool. I can't see a thing. Whilst the volcano was bubbling away, I was out collecting resources considering I lost everything in the fire earlier. I dedicated days 8 to 15 to complete resource collection. Cobblestone, dark wood, spruce wood, iron, coal, anything I could get my hands on. All whilst the volcano was bubbling away behind me. You know, I was pretty worried. I thought it was going to erupt at 
any moment. On the night of day 16, I decided to do a little bit of exploring considering I'd walked all this way. I stumbled across this small campsite and there was this random guy chatting to himself outside. I ignored him and headed in anyway. Inside, I discovered a bed and a chest full of food. And considering it's hardcore survival, I decided to take it all because every man for himself, right? I then tried to speak to this guy, but he just kept chatting to himself. I know it's up there, it's breathing fire, it's breathing fire, I know it's up there. This guy was pretty obsessed with the volcano, and when I stood in his way, he wasn't too happy about it. What are you doing? Get out of the way, get out of the way, I'm trying to climb you. I heard a dragon, a real dragon. If I make it to the top, that's my ticket out of here. This guy clearly was insane. I'm the only one with a dragon egg on this island, so I headed home. I made it home on day 18 and turned my little hut into a workstation, ready to get building. I stepped outside and started looking at the area in which I would build my base. Once I had it all planned in my head, I got to work. Out of nowhere, I was ambushed by this giant creature that looked similar to the queen I had killed earlier, but it did a ton more damage and was striking me with its stinger. I had no choice but to flee back into my house. I was down to just half a heart. I am sick and tired of being on such low health on this 100 days. I fled to my little workstation and waited for it to go away. It wouldn't leave, so I decided to finish it off with my sword. Finally, right, back to work. I finally finished the first part of my volcanic base. I decided to leave this part as a sort of workstation. I then decided it was time to finally hatch the dragon egg. I placed it down and watched as particles fizzed around it. The egg snapped, crackled and popped, but I really didn't think it was going to hatch. I waited around for a really long time when suddenly there it was! A cute little baby fire dragon! This was hands down the best thing that has ever happened to me in Minecraft. Ever. The dragon was pretty scared of me at first, but then it crawled into my room and it started asking for food. Hey mister, I'm hungry. Can you get me some food? I immediately headed out to try and get some food for my new baby dragon. I made sure they were all tucked up safe in my house that I had built and then headed out on day 29 to collect some food. I was only coming across small things like mushrooms here and there, all whilst battling mobs that were trying to kill me. I then took a few moments to appreciate the view because this island is mesmerizing. During my search for food, I was coming across small structures, including this mine shaft, in which I was ambushed by a giant crimson mosquito, which started sucking my blood. It was doing a little bit of damage by spitting the blood back at me. It creeped me out, so I took this thing out as soon as possible. I then was hoping for food inside the chest, but when I opened it up, I didn't find a lot, just some iron and a dagger. And then this enderman thanked me for killing the mosquito, because it was biting him in his sleep. Day 31, and this volcano island wasn't getting any easier. The mob were absolutely insane. This weird, terrifying koala bear thing was absolutely tearing through my heart. I was using my shield and new dagger in combination to take it out. I then headed over to this small structure, had a look inside the chest and found these cool daggers. I then continued my search for food and got pretty lucky finding wheat and also this cool looking sword. And then day 32 was here and I found a pond filled with fish. So I got to work collecting as much meat as possible so I could take it back for my baby dragon. At first, they didn't like the mushroom, but when I started feeding them the fish, they were loving it. After eating a ton of food, my baby dragon laid down to relax, but then something insane happened. They evolved a whole new size, and this wasn't even their final form. I can't spread my wings. Can you make this place bigger? Of course! Let's get to work! As you can see, I spent a ton of time mining as much as possible. I dug the base a little bit deeper, terraformed the entire top, and then made a sort of landing pad area so I could take the dragon out and then bring them back and land them safely in my base. I also left a glass top so I could see that beautiful volcano in all her glory. Day 42 was really important. My dragon was growing even larger in size, which I didn't think was possible, and I also decided to go strip mining, which, if you're a fan of the channel, you know is like my favorite thing ever. But then I stumbled across this cave, and the fun ended pretty quickly, as I was ambushed by absolutely tons of mobs. I was surrounded by mobs left, right, and center, and all I had was these two little daggers to keep me alive, but they were pretty cool to use. How I survived is pretty much a miracle. <laughs> I had like a moment of peace before I was attacked by mobs again, and then I stumbled across diamonds. I couldn't believe it, so I sprinted away, plugged myself in, and finally mined them up. Ah, 
Oh, diamonds. They're literally the best thing ever. Whilst I was mining, the volcano started shaking once again. So I decided to speed things up. I dedicated the next few days to complete all collection, all whilst being stalked up on by evil mobs. And then on day 53, I finally made it to the surface, took a look around, and then headed into this nearby structure in hopes to find some cool loot. But when I headed down, I was met with a really crazy surprise. There was a guy captured here called Buck. Who are you? The name's Buck, and well, the reason I'm all chained up in here is because I tried to steal some lava crystals from the Nether Keeper. I know, I know. Wait, you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> oh dear. He explained that with lava crystals, he could craft lava armor and go swimming in the volcano because there is a hidden fortress in there. But the nether keeper is what protects the crystals. So I said, I will go and get the crystals myself. I promised Buck I would return and free him from these chains. But in the meantime, I needed to hurry. I checked the chest for loot and did find a name tag and a saddle, which would be perfect for my dragon back at home. So I headed back as soon as possible, sprinting past volcanic mobs trying to take me down. Day 56, I made it back to the volcano base and I was so excited to give my dragon their new name tag. I headed in, did a few quality of life improvements, placed down the anvil and named my dragon Sparky. Once I applied the name tag, I also gave them a saddle, which I thought looked pretty snazzy. Are you happy? Let's go exploring. I want to fly. Sparky was just as excited as I was, so I got a good night's rest and made a full set of diamond armor ready to face the nether keeper and get my hands on those lava crystals. This was the moment. Day 57, I take flight on a dragon. This was something I've wanted to do ever since day one when I picked up that fire dragon egg. As we flew high into the sky, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The views were absolutely breathtaking, and as Sparky flew me high into the sky, I was thinking about the magical terrace that I would discover at the top of that volcano, but I was in no condition. I need to get my hands on that lava armor, so it was time for me and Sparky to head out. Over the next few days, I was traversing the island on the hunt for the Nether Keeper. I was coming across all sorts of structures, but no sign of this evil boss that Buck spoke of until this moment. Their boss bar appeared, so I quickly landed Sparky and cleared the area of any hostile mobs. Day 58, time to fight. I'll protect these crystals with my life. Leave or die. I approached the nether keeper, ready to battle head on, but I quickly underestimated his power, and with one swing, he did a ton of damage, knocking me down to just two and a half hearts. So I whipped out my bow and started firing shots. My bow was doing small but consistent damage. I then decided to sprint around and see if I could flank this beast. I stuck up from behind and started striking him with my sword. But then out of nowhere, I was flanked by these creatures. They seemed to be mutated by the lava and could withstand the heat. They were flinging creatures at me. It did a ton of damage. I had no choice but to run away. I took some time to regain some strength all whilst dodging these catapulted projectiles. I was picking my bow shots and I finally destroyed the creature. Man, these things are really annoying. I cleared the area of the creatures and then headed in to continue my battle with the nether keeper. I was picking my bow shots, but then he did a ton of damage. I decided it was time to grab Sparky and see if I could fight this beast from the air. I lined up my shots and started firing arrows into the beast. I finally defeated the nether keeper, all whilst riding on Sparky's back. The ultimate team, but he left behind minions that were determined to taking me down. I've got him boys, protect the crystals! I finished off the last of the nether keeper's minions and then I could finally get my hands on those lava crystals. Well, they weren't crystals, they were shards, but I can craft them into crystals when I get home. I dedicated the day to just solely collecting these lava shards and also other ores that I came across in the caves. After collecting a ton of the lava shards and some obsidian, I jumped on Sparky and we headed home. With an inventory filled with lava crystals, I headed back. It took me two days to make it back home, but once I made it, I filled Sparky's belly up with fish to regain their health because they took some damage. It was time to make the armor, but first I would need to charge these crystals in a pool of lava to infuse them. I don't know why. I guess that's just what makes them fireproof. I then crafted the full set of lava armor and got rid of my diamond armor because that's for peasants. This full set of lava armor looked incredible and was glowing.
glowing against my skin. I also crafted a battle axe, which I'm sure would ignite my enemies. I took a look at the volcano. I was wondering what incredible things would be at the top. But before we head up, I wanted to spend some time with Sparky. I thought after everything we've been through the last few days, it would be good to take some downtime. On day 64, I took Sparky to their favorite spot, set up a campfire, and we chatted all night. When the sun rose the next day, me and Sparky headed out, flying in and out the canyons of the volcano. We were coming across loads of structures and decided to take our time looting everything we could find. We explored every inch of the volcanic island. We were finding so many little secret hideouts. It was incredible. We were finding loot left, right, and center. Sparky's come a long way since that tiny little baby dragon just a few days ago. Day 75 was here and it was time to head to the top of that volcano. As I flew up, I was met with an incredible view. The pools of lava were radiating tons of heat. I was pretty terrified. The mobs here had been mutated by the volcanic essence and they were terrifying. <laughs> These mutants were trying to set me alight, but with my lava armor, I was fully fire resistant, so I felt pretty confident heading to that sea of lava. It was really quiet, almost too quiet, and then I was ambushed by a bone serpent! These volcanic monsters would leap high into the air and strike me upon their descent. I used my shield and battle axe to strike down this bone serpent. It was clear he was trying to protect something. Once I took him down, it was time to head into the sea of lava and find this fortress. As I headed deeper, I came across a structure. This had to be it. I chewed through the walls and swam through the pool of lava and made it into this fortress. Volcanic spores dribbled from the walls and then I was captured. I seemed to be stuck inside this gooey stick like material. Once I broke out, there was no one to be seen. It must have been the spores leaking from the walls. Once I dropped down, I was captured once again. Something was trying to stop me from finding the heart of this fortress, but I carried on. I was navigating these rooms when suddenly an army of the Netherkeeper's minions came out of nowhere and started attacking me. They were incredibly fast and did a ton of damage. I managed to strike them back with my lava sword and continue navigating these maze-like corridors. Day 77, I stumbled across a chest filled with loot and then I almost lost my life because this creature knocked me down to just half a heart. I knew I was close to the heart of this fortress. I could feel it. But then the entire fortress started shaking. This was it. This was the moment the volcano was about to erupt. I had to get out of here as soon as possible. The fortress started rising from the sea of lava. I bridged across and tried to escape as fast as possible. I made it back to Sparky and we flew away as quickly as we could as the volcano was about to erupt. The volcano's eruption had devastated the island and the sky began to be filled with the volcanic ash. As it filled the sky, everything darkened. It was almost as if the nether and the overworld had merged into one. I was surrounded by volcanic mobs. It was time to fight. I was completely surrounded and to make it worse, the fire dragon appeared. It was an intense battle between man and dragon. His fire breathing did incredible amounts of damage. I had no choice but to return with my bow shots. The dragon's scales seemed impenetrable, but after hours of battling, the dragon seemed weak. I wonder if Sparky was okay. This was the moment. I charged at the dragon and struck him down with my battle axe, finally defeating him. I was still surrounded by tons of mobs though, so I fled as fast as possible. This must have been the dragon that was behind the volcanic eruption. The dragon may be down, but I had to grab Sparky and get out of here as fast as possible. I headed into the volcanic skies. It was an intense flight, but the views were quite mesmerizing. I quickly realized that nowhere was safe on this volcanic island now that it erupted, so I found refuge inside this tree. I lit it up and stayed with just one heart and waited till the morning. Day 86, the storm had passed and things seemed a lot calmer, so I dedicated the last few days to mining and building a quick little base. It was time to build a new life on this once beautiful beautiful island. It has been an incredible 100 days, but me and Sparky made it. Thanks for watching. My name's the Coffee Fuel Genius. Peace. Well, I guess I'll be stuck here for the rest of my days. <laughs> whoa, 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 don't cry. I'm, I'm here now. I'm really sorry I'm late. I was like too busy surviving a volcanic eruption and fighting fire-breathing dragons. You have no idea what I've been through. How about you come back with me and Sparky and I'll explain.